Hi everyone and welcome back to National 5 Biology. Today we're going to be continuing with Unit 2, Multicellular Organisms, and we're moving on to Key Area 3, which is reproduction. It's quite a short key area, but there's a few things that we have to go over here. So we're going to be looking at sexual reproduction throughout this key area. So sexual reproduction requires two parents, and the parents have to produce sex cells, which we call gametes. So sexual reproduction takes place in plants and animals, and we're going to compare them and where the gametes come from later on in this key area. So first of all, we need to know what these gametes, what these sex cells actually are. So in males, in animals, males produce sperm, whereas in plants, the male gamete is pollen. They both do the same function, but they're just different things in animals and plants. In females, they're a bit more similar. So in females, the animal gamete is egg, and the female plant gamete is an ovule. So we'll look at where these are produced later on. So these gametes, these male and female sex cells, they have the job of carrying half of the chromosomes for the new offspring. Because if you think about it, 50% of your genetic information comes from your mother, and 50% comes from your father. And these are through the gametes. If we look at this in comparison, we look at chromosomes and body cells and in the sex cells and the gametes, touching on what we've looked at before in the previous key area. So in humans, there are 46 chromosomes in their normal body cells. However, in their sex cells, in their gametes, there are 23. This is because the sex cells, the gametes, have to carry half the chromosomes because they are both going to combine to produce, a, uh, in this case, a 46 chromosome zygote, which is the term that we use here. So the zygote, this beginning of an embryo of a fetus of a baby, contains 46 chromosomes, 23 from the mother, 23 from the father, that have been produced from their gametes. So the egg gamete, the female gamete, and the sperm cell have combined with their 23 chromosomes each to produce this 46 chromosome zygote. And if you remember, we refer to these in terms of body cells as diploid, whereas the sex cells are haploid, and finally this zygote is a diploid, and that's going to continue to develop into a baby. So if you need a refresher of haploid and diploid, hopefully you remember this bit here, but sex cells carry half the chromosomes from the mother or father, they are haploid. So a human sex cell would have 23 chromosomes as opposed to a normal body cell, a skin cell, muscle cell, all these sorts of things that have 46, they are double the number. So there's some examples here just so you can have a bit of a refresher. So in the following examples, I want you to identify the haploid chromosome number in the gametes of these organisms. So for example, if a giraffe, if you took a giraffe skin cell, you would find 62 chromosomes. So how many chromosomes would you find in their gametes? So hopefully you know that then you would find 31 chromosomes in their gametes, in their sex cells, because they are haploid and that's half the number. In a hedgehog, you would find 88 chromosomes in their skin cells or liver cells or body cells, or any form at all. However, in their sex cells, you would find 44, because body cells are diploid and sex cells are haploid. Again, if a worm, 36 chromosomes in their body cells would mean that there are 18 chromosomes in their sex cells. Switching up slightly for this woolly mammoth, if you had a look at the gamete of a woolly mammoth, you would find 29 chromosomes, which would mean how many would you find in any of their body chromosomes, in their body cells? You would find 58 because body cells are diploid as opposed to sex cells which are haploid, which means they are double the number of the gametes. In a tiger, you would find 19 chromosomes in their sex cells. How many would be in their body cells? Be 38, that's double the number. And finally, for some plants which have massively more uh, sets of chromosomes than animals, the number of chromosomes in their pollen or their ovule and their gametes in this case would be 630. So in other parts of the plant cell, there'd be 1260. Again, just showing that it's double the amount. So looking a bit more in plants, we're going to take a look at where uh, gametes are produced in plants and have a look at this diagram as well, because it could come up. So very simply, pollen, which hopefully you remember is the male gamete, is produced in the anthers. So the parts are sticking up here uh, towards the top of the diagram whereas ovules are produced in the ovaries. 
ovules and ovaries sound fairly similar, so hopefully that would be a good way if you're remembering that. In animals, it's a little bit different. Sperm is produced in the testes, so the male gamete is produced in the testes. In the female server, eggs are produced in the ovaries, so a bit easier to remember because it's exactly the same as plants. And you could be asked in the exam to state the site of these gamete uh, productions or what is produced in, for example, the ovaries or the testes. Finally, what we're going to look at is the process of fertilization. It's important to know this definition. So fertilization is when the nucleus of a haploid sperm and the nucleus of a haploid egg fuse together in order to form a diploid zygote. So going back to that diagram we looked at earlier on. It's important to remember it's not just a sperm and egg colliding together, it's the nucleus in the sperm and the nucleus in the egg which fuse together all that genetic information that has been passed on through the gametes. The actual site of fertilization is in the oviduct. You might have came across as fallopian tubes before, but we say the oviduct in biology. So the sperm and the egg meet together in the oviduct and that is where the process of fertilization takes place. Once that fertilized egg, which we have said before is a zygote, a diploid zygote, is fertilized, it implants itself in the wall of the uterus. And that's where it begins to grow and develop into an embryo and then a fetus, and then once it's born, into a baby. So that's all you need to know for this key area. Like I said, it is quite short, um, but there are a few new terms and phrases for you to know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add the quizzes uh, underneath this and the information of this YouTube video. And feel free to send me a message about or write in the comments about anything else you'd like. There are going to be some more videos coming up very soon. And I'm also going to get on with some more skills questions that people are wanting to do as well. So thank you very much for listening and the rest of Unit 2 will be coming up very soon. Thanks very much.